Have you told your friends that you see ghosts? Oh, absolutely not. Gina Rodriguez returns in Not Dead Yet. I'm back, baby. Who is up? Oh, she's the obituary writer. And Brad Garrett joins the brilliant ensemble cast. Titan, Maverick, Titan of all Mavericks. These are all words used to describe me. Baby, I got you shook, got you shook. Not Dead Yet, season premiere. Tonight, 8.30, 7.30 Central on ABC and stream on Hulu. about the ongoing war between werewolves and vampires well thankfully there's one filmmaker out there willing to make a documentary about this very thing and that documentary is the howling six the freaks now is it a little boring yes but what documentary isn't are the special effects cheesy what special effects it's reality (laughs) i'm joined by a werewolf ralph of the gore horseman podcast and a vampire scott roger and i'm matt kelly here on this week's episode of horror movie night the debate of the werewolves versus the vampires let's begin so wait does that if i'm a vampire does that make you a vampire does that just make you um the narrator just the narrator lame so we watched as as requested by someone we watched the howling six the freaks and like it's bad. It's, it's, <laughs> it's just boring. It's so boring. It's so long. It's so, so boring. I have such a weird relationship with the Howling movies because I feel like I want to like them all more than I like any of them. Yeah. <laughs> Although uh, Howling 2 was pretty fucking entertaining. It was a, a Coke nightmare, but it was pretty entertaining. <laughs> Howling 2 has the best soundtrack of the bunch, guaranteed. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, it's got weird howling on it. (laughs) My transformation! (laughs) Is it real? (laughs) I I was... I got to the point where I was so bored while watching this that I started to look up the VHS covers to all the howling movies because I remember them having, like, enticing VHS tapes. But... (laughs) Really, all it was was that the howling was ballsy enough to just straight up throw what the wolf looks like in every movie on the cover of the DVD or of the VHS tapes, especially parts four and five. You're just like, here's our shitty ass wolf by our movie. Yeah. My my biggest problem with that, though, is that like the werewolves only look good when they're (laughs) not moving, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Yeah, this wolf looks awful. Like this wolf oh, yeah. looks, and the more that I see it, the more I realize how stupid it looks. Like it's, it's bad. So wait, I have a quick question before we roll into this. Now I watched this on YouTube and um, I, I just wondered if, are the transformations like super half-assed in the real version? And I just got kind of screwed by seeing a TV version or did they really not show like full transformations? In they this never showed any full transformation. Wow. This movie sucks. Like, that's your whole draw for doing a fucking werewolf movie. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a thing that I wrote down, and this doesn't necessarily mean that I think the movie's good, but this movie, possibly more than almost any other movie that we've watched, really gives me, like, a super VHS nostalgia for just, like... Like, the movie just looks exactly like the movie that you would rent on a VHS tape in, like, every way, shape, and form. Like, not just the quality of the picture, but, like... The quality of the content is that, like, fuck it, we're just going to make it and throw it on VHS quality film. Like, it, I, I'm not sure if that makes sense, but as I was watching, I was like... I, no, it makes sense. Like, as I was watching, I'm like, man, this reminds me of just picking up a random VHS at the video store and calling it a day. You know, I, I don't think that this was good enough to really give me that, like, warm fuzzy on the inside, but um, I've definitely felt that recently, uh, particularly when we watched um, Bloody New Year. That that was like so crummy, but it just gave me that nostalgia of like 
No, oh, I found this hidden gem that's kind of garbage, but they tried. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of striking out when you would rent video when when you would rent VHS tapes. Oh, yeah. Like you struck out more than you hit home runs. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what this whole podcast is about. If you listen to us week by week, you realize that most of the time we're striking out on this garbage. <laughs> So, Ralph, thank you for joining us. Absolutely, man. I, I'm sorry we're talking about Howling 6, though. <laughs> All right. So let's let's walk through this movie. Um, so the movie starts off with a girl being chased, and I have no clue how old this girl's supposed to be because she's clearly 30, but she's dressed like she's 10 with, like, a teddy bear yeah. and shit. Yeah, that's so weird. There's way too many teddy bears in this movie. There I feel is. like every single girl is holding a teddy bear. And the and the, the the daughter is so weird, dude. She's like she's she's got this weird little voice that she does, and I don't I don't know what they're trying to recreate with that character. Yeah, it's it's not good. This movie is fucking rough. I will. I rode this fast forward button. I was super tempted. But I really had to sit through the five minute we're fixing up the church musical montage sequence. Oh my god! No, I didn't fast forward through that shit. That was great. Uh, I, actually, my, my what is my note? Man, I don't even know. I ha- I thought that I had a note about this. Where it's like, is this a how? Is this a horror movie or is it just like a a buddy movie where they're like fixing up this this small town like church and he's gonna a weird past year. I don't it, know. But. It legit takes 55 minutes for this to actually turn into a horror movie. Yeah, it only it's only a horror movie for about six or seven minutes. And <laughs> that six or seven minutes isn't even that no. good. So so we have so we have Ian, who's this drifter and spoiler alert, also a werewolf. Uh and he comes <laughs> to this small town that's like going through a very like Jaws type deal where you've got this this mayor obsessed with re-election and like him kind of bullying the ch- the sheriff into like letting a lot of shit slide in order to uh to get that re-election. So while Ian's like fixing up a church with the local pastor and his creepy daughter, uh there's a circus parade. You know how there's constantly circus parades just rolling through your town every time that the carnival's around. Yeah. Yeah. They, they this carnival is supposed to feel like it's so ragged, but there are like a shitload of people in this carnival. And secondly, when they're walking through the carnival, it's massive. Yeah, it's gigantic. Um, the the very first scene that we see at the circus involves what seems to be a very crowd pleasing mime choking another mime bit that like goes nowhere and means <laughs> nothing. Like I'm like, what is this? I have been to enough carnivals and circuses to never see just a mime choke another mime and then them take a dramatic bow to a series of applauses. <laughs> like it's so it's, it's this whole movie has the feeling of like, and I didn't look it up, but I feel like the, the director is not originally from America. Like it's got a very like guy who's just winging it on what Americans like. So it's like, Oh, all little girls carry teddy bears. <laughs> All men love playing football. Yeah, this has a very weird, like, maybe it's just me, but it feels like it was filmed in the outback. Uh, It's just a, it is a real head scratcher of a film. I do like anytime they show a desert that you just get like this cool guitar sting. It reminded me of uh, the intro for Hey Dude, (laughs) where it's just like, I just was waiting for like tumbleweeds. I mean, they even did the effect where the guy's walking and he fades out. And then he's closer, and then he fades out again, and then he's closer. I was like, oh, boy, we're in for a hey, dude, howling. I thought that it was going to be like Desperado or something like that, but no. Well, and this is uh, hey, this has Scott's favorite thing that we learned from last week. Lots of harmonica. Fucking harmonicas. <laughs> yeah. So we, we're at this, this weird circus, and that's where we meet Harker, who's the leader of the traveling circus, who also has a bizarre and kind of really inappropriate trio of thugs, uh, specifically like the the half-assed like drag queen type girl. Yeah, I, it's supposed to be the bearded man um, or the bearded woman rather. And uh, but like it doesn't read that way. It just reads like a I don't even I don't know if it was a trans woman or a cross dresser yeah, or I don't know what it is. I don't know how to read it. It's like, and I, I, I was, I'm sorry. I probably should have done this, but I was going to check and see if that was 
played by a man or a woman. Um, I have a feeling it was a man, but I didn't want to offend anybody. In any case, it, it doesn't read right. Like nothing about this reads correctly and and everything feels like very offensive yeah. it's so it's it's very odd to be like offended by what is arguably like a popcorn howling flick that they did on a that shoestring budget and, and it was played by a man i just checked on wikipedia all right it doesn't really explain a whole lot no but i mean it has it's one, indication it, it gives us this really inappropriate unnecessary and like like less than two second tit shot yeah yeah okay (laughs) that's really why i was like wait so is it a woman playing a bearded woman or is it a man and it's a prosthetic boob yeah it's it's weird the whole movie's weird but and i was confused in some of the freaks because it it seemed like some of them were faking their gimmick whereas others you know kind of legitimately did it you know uh alligator boy as an example they just kind of dress him up he's not really a freak is he He's just got like a skin issue. Yeah, he's got a skin disease. Would I want that myself? No, but <laughs> I don't know. Like, I love the part where they, they, uh, where Harker debuts him to the carnival and he goes, The amazing alligator boy. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's such a letdown. Do you guys know who Alligator Boy is? No. He looks familiar. I don't know the fucking actor's name, but if you remember Wayne's World, he's partied out Phil. Oh, so he's the guy that's God. like, yes, <laughs> he's wow. passed out on the bench, and they're like, Phil, you partied out, and then like the, when they're singing Bohemian Rhapsody, he's just sitting in the middle, passed out on the one guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow, that's fantastic. He, I feel like he did this, what, like right after Wayne's World, and was like, this is my big break. I get tons of. I think this was right before. I think this was like the mistake that you made and then Wayne's World opened the door for you shortly thereafter. And he didn't step through it. <laughs> Let's see. Hold on a second. I'm looking at his IMDb page right now. And Motherfucker was a member of uh, Buford Tannen's gang the, the year before this in Back to the Future 3. Then he slummed mm-hmm. it for <laughs> LA 6 and then did Wayne's World. And then what? Uh, not much. <laughs> a lot of All right. But like I said, yeah. that door was open. He did not. A lot of a lot of television. A lot of television and very minor roles. He was additional voice talent in Saw Three. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I hope he's been able to pay. I hope he's able to pay the bills. So I have a question: How many Howling movies are there? So there's it's there's seven, and then there's a remake. So eight in total. There's a remake. When did that remake come out? Maybe like five years ago. It was wow. like Howling Rebirth or something like that. Um, wow. Yeah. Terrible. Well, the, are, are, are they all super lackluster? So, so yes and no. Like the weirdest thing about the Howling for I own six of the eight. Including this including one? Including this one. But do you have them individually or do you have them as a set? So this was on a set of part five and part six. And then I own one through four individually. Oh, the, is it that as they had diminishing returns with the later um, yeah. <laughs> parts of the franchise, yeah. they just put them out as double DVDs? Pretty much. Part one is good, not great. And I, that's a controversial yeah, statement, but I like it. I don't love it. Part two is only fun because it's garbage. Part three, I enjoy because it's not werewolves. The, is that the marsupials? Yeah, the marsupials is really like just a fun Australian outback and that movie. That one's Australian. Yeah. Four is whatever. It's basically just a remake of the first movie again. All I remember about five is that it's a murder mystery inside a castle where the final reveal is that the murderer was a werewolf. So it's like a very like wow. it's like that Hellraiser movie where Pinhead doesn't show up until the last like 30 seconds of the movie. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that uh, Hellraiser five? I think so. Where it's just like a fucking film noir movie, like a gritty detective film. And then yeah, at the very it's end, terrible. yeah, no, part five is bad. Supposedly, a character from Part 5 appears as a carnival uh, attendee in this movie, and then her character from Part 5 continues into Part 7, and she makes an, like a comment about going to the carnival recently. Like, like it's like a really fucking dumb way to like kind of weave those three stories together, and I don't think I've ever seen Part 7, so I can't speak on that at all. Speaking on the carnival, how the hell do they make any money? Because I feel like the production costs on that carnival must be astronomical That's and I'm they're saying. going to all these towns that have like 12 people in it <laughs> yeah yeah well uh, maybe it's that they don't really need to eat maybe they're all monsters and they just live off of human oh, man, blood i didn't even piece this together but i just realized that like the whole point of them coming to these towns is because it's towns that are like 
drying up so they can kill people and everyone in the town just assumes that it's people who are fleeing the town because they're drying up. Don't feel bad about only coming to that conclusion now because it's kind of very, very loosely implied. It's not like they're yeah. mashing I just together. pieced that yeah, together. Yeah, don't feel bad, Matt. It, you've, you've been oblivious to way more obvious things in, in our time <laughs> podcasting together. Most Johnny Depp. Uh, well, that was, um, so, I was going to say uh, women's advances, but you know we all have our mistakes. So I will say, and this isn't a shock to anybody listening to the show or anybody on this call. Um, my favorite part was the funhouse scene because <laughs> <laughs> I do love me some funhouses. But holy shit, that chicken getting its head bit off scene probably the most disturbing scene in the whole movie. Yeah. Well, okay. So what makes that part? less entertaining for me is that it was done so much better in Luther the Geek. Yeah. Which is never, well, arguably never going to be discussed on this show. But I've mentioned before about how just absolutely disturbed I was after looking at that VHS cover art, box art, right? Yeah. Oh my God, as a child, that actually fucked me up for like a week. I, and, and I watched it, what, like last year? And it's one of the better trauma films because they didn't make it they just bought it right yeah I mean, it's really it's a it's a really screwed up film i wouldn't desire to watch it just for fun you know i would do it for the podcast but i mean i don't even know if we could get a good episode out of it but it, yeah, it's, it's not a like a, weird. it's not a, an entertaining film and it's not a it just kind of makes you feel gross and so i get what you're saying about this this uh chicken bite um it felt just, they just feel like the freaks or the geeks rather. Those are geeks. Um, yeah. That's just gross. Yeah. I don't know. Think back on a time in our country when that was entertainment. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I read that like they were looked down upon in the carnival scene because like usually it was just like a drug addict or an alcoholic that they would hire to do it yeah. for like beer money. Yeah. So Ian transforms during the next full moon and he's spotted by the geek. But his transformation. Can we just re- reiterate here that it is so bad? It's like it's not even weak. when he's even fully a werewolf, when he's caught by the circus, he doesn't look like a fully transformed werewolf. He looks now, like the only thing in its design I like is the legs. I like the way that the legs are kind of like dog legs. Yeah. Leg. yeah. Yeah. Like, I was like, OK, that's cool. But they don't even really show that with. The, no, it's one character. shot. It's when he's in the carnival, you see him standing, and he's got the prostheses under his feet, and it's it looks cool as hell. But the rest of the body looks like shit. His face can't emote. He just looks like he's trying to take a poop. And yeah. that, but really, that first transformation scene in the bedroom, like I said earlier, I was wondering if I had seen a shortened version of this film because the editing is absolute shit. Like they probably did a full a full makeup set for him and he didn't even it didn't even all make it on screen probably because it looked like garbage this was a super tame movie too oh, like yeah like this could have been a pg-13 movie had it's you not, not had now i mean because you have that boob shot if it wasn't for like uh, the boob shot and the chicken getting its head bitten off this would have just been a pg-13 easily the werewolf costume looked like pretty cheap to me i mean it looked like something you would see if you went to like universal studios and like saw beetlejuice's rock and roll review you know that's what the werewolf looked like (laughs) or or you know just something that would pop up in a in a music video like the the backstreet boys uh everybody music video yeah you know that's that's exactly what it looked like it looks like the werewolf backstreet boy oh yeah it just doesn't look movie quality so like the budget on this had to be pretty much nothing i don't know if you guys have that information offhand they spent all of their budget Fixing that church up, dude. Like, <laughs> do you think that they did that for this film? No. It says it says the budget was two million. That which, seems like a shitload of movie for this, or a yeah. shitload of money for this movie. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess film stock costs something, but like, oh, because it wasn't straight to VHS. Yeah. Uh, so, I have two questions about this transformation scene. Question number one: You're a werewolf. 
you're aware that you're a werewolf, you know that it's going to be the full moon, and you're at the house of a person who's been taking very good care of you and that you like and respect. Wouldn't you, like, I don't know, make sure you weren't inside the house that night just to be safe? I feel like he forgot it was going to be a fucking full moon. He was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, and then question number two, when Harkin captures him and takes him in the freak show, he's human, but it's, like, still the middle of the night. Like, why did he turn back into a person so quickly? And then Harker can, like... Say a spell that turns him into the werewolf to show um, the people that he was staying with that he's a bad dude or something. It, it The internal logic of this film is just bullshit. So uh, not a lot happens at this point. Like now it's just here's Ian in the freak show and it's not nearly as entertaining as the movie Freaked. And... <laughs> Meanwhile, like the deputy or the sheriff, whatever he is, is like trying to figure out what's going on. And he's uncovering a bunch of stuff about Harkin. Um, and it has probably the best line in the entire movie in which Harkin says, don't move or I'll shoot your dick into the next county. And Harkin <laughs> just says, then I won't move. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one thing about Harker, his name's Harker, yeah. not Harkin. Sorry, uh, Harker. It's OK. Really not the worst name you've you've mangled on our show. But he looks like the Kmart. Uh, what's the guy from Warlock? I was going to say he looks like Warlock. <laughs> yeah. I actually, I MDB'd him when I was watching this to see um, Julian Sands. I was uh, like, is he Julian Sands? He's not. He's And Julian Sands is a much better actor. Not that Julian Sands is a good actor, but he's better than this dude. In any case. What do you think about, Har what do you think about Harker's uh, vampire look? It's not terrible. But, like, the only really en entertaining part of this movie, I think, uh, has to be when Vampire Harker smashes up from his coffin and bites the mayor on his stomach. Yeah. No, that's that scene's pretty cool. Um, I love that when Ian escapes, it's this, like, this super monotone guy running around just going, the werewolf escaped. The werewolf, <laughs> yeah. the werewolf escaped yeah i have that guy um, in my list too so there's is it just me is or or and i you can probably speak to this more than i can matt and maybe you can too ralph if you've seen some of the other howlings i've only seen one and two in this one does it always look like werewolves are coming as they're transforming <laughs> I, I feel I like the howling ones are a little more like sexualized than other har uh, excuse me other werewolf movies I mean, I, I, I do agree. <laughs> they always try to make it look like sexual. Let's get the internet on this. Stop sexualizing our werewolves. We're going to yeah, protest yeah, we're, the howling film. I'm going to start using Twitter again. I'm going to get this hashtag trending. <laughs> uh, but think about it. Okay, in the first howling, is there any wolf sex? I can't remember. But in howling 2, there's a lot of wolf sex. And then in this one, there's wolf sex, although he's not really like a wolf when they're having sex. But... Lizzie totally fucks the werewolf. Yeah, I, I would say that there is in the marsupials as well. I don't think I've watched four or five enough times to to let you know, but I'll I'll uh, rewatch and report back. Um, Ugh, take your time, so, please take your time. I don't want to think about it. Well, so after I, I want to mention that after Lizzie and what's what's the good good werewolf's Ian. name? Ian. Ian. God, after they bang, he gets up. And he's like. I love you, Lizzie. I'm like, oh my God, he's fucking crazy. She just had sex with a crazy man who actually turns out to be a werewolf. You know how they say like, don't put your dick in crazy. It's like, don't let crazy put his dick in you. <laughs> this guy is a really, really bad choice. And she also talks like a fucking baby. Like we did American Gothic a couple weeks ago and she talks like the fucking grownups. Yeah, she talks like Fanny. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, this movie is crazy. So this all builds to a really weak-ass final fight. Like, oh, it's terrible. This fight is horrendously bad. The only good thing at this point it, like, is the end of the fight because I really like the melting effect on, Harkin, uh, on Harker. It's a super low-budget, cheap melting effect, but it's I like so it. It's so low-budget, yeah. But I love how much they cut back to them reacting to him melting, too. But their yeah. reactions never change. Like, they're just looking at it. He's melting. They're looking at it. He's melting. They're looking at it. He's melting. So I have a question, though, because at the end of this movie, Alligator Boy is bitten by both Harker, Harker and Ian. So, like, is he like a half vampire, half werewolf? Or, like, does that cancel each other out now? Like, I don't really. Have you seen Underworld? No. 
Well, because Underworld is Underworld? this is the prequel to Underworld. Have you not? How have you not seen Underworld? Eh, no interest. <laughs> what, dude? Okay, I don't know how I feel about the sequels, but the original Underworld was the shit, and it still is really, really entertaining. Back when it was like you had your your fucking techno goth vampires, where they're all wearing leather and listening to like techno music, and I mean, Kate Beckinsale is super hot in that movie, and. You know, the werewolf transformations in that movie are pretty solid. There's a lot of CGI, but Ralph, back me up. Like, Underworld is a pretty sweet movie, right? Never seen Underworld. What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you guys? I don't like, I never like the, I don't like vampire movies to begin with, but I really don't like the super gothy vampires, so nothing about Holy it appeals to me. Holy shit, Matt. This is <laughs> like rocking my world right now. Look, so- I like my vampires to be watching a shirtless man playing a saxophone <laughs> on a beach. That's just how I no, roll. No, you like your vampires to be like the ones in Monster Squad. Yo, when you say, yeah. I don't like vampire movies, that just really shocks me because it's such a classic monster and you seem like such a classic monster guy i am but i like even dracula i appreciate the art of dracula but have you ever watched any of the sequels to dracula even we in don't the talk 30s, about those <laughs> even in the 30s they couldn't make more than one good vampire movie so like i just feel like there's there's not that much going on in the vampire lore to like necessitate the insane amount of vampire movies that have been created well, there. Well, okay. So, if we're gonna just think about the vampires, most innovation that's happened to vampires in like a hundred years is making them sparkle, which is like not a positive <laughs> step. Okay, here a couple things about vampires. One, um, it's hard to to go up from Nosferatu because Nosferatu is still a genuinely terrifying movie to me. It's and it's mostly because of the fact that he's not like a romantic vampire he's not the victorian style vampire victorian style vampires are lame as hell that's also because one were men and men were never the target demographic of vampire lore when it's when it's victorian vampire lore it's the idea of like it was they were very female centric where they they were um the idea of this animalistic creature that would they were they were an incubus basically um, yeah, female vampires are like succubi, but uh, male vampire was an incubus instead of like a blood sucking creature of the night. And that's where that classical Bram Stoker Dracula comes from, where it's like sexual. And um, I, I don't think that we're like men have never really been the target demographic. Yeah, like guys get seduced by the brides of Dracula or the daughters of darkness or whatever in vampire movies, but it's never been the main point. Like, watch Fright Night. What's the crucial point of Fright Night is that the the vampire steals Charlie's girlfriend and turns her into a vamp. Like it's it's kind of uh you know one of the ultimate tropes of vampire movies. Now this movie is not so much the same, but I think that vampire movies can be done well and I think that you can make them interesting, but a lot of the time now we don't get interesting vampires because the idea of like contagion has been taken over by zombies. And so if you have like a vampire movie that has contagion where it's about like, okay, I've gotten bitten and I'm turning and blah, blah, blah. It's usually kind of, we don't remember it as a vampire movie. We remember it as a contagion movie or like a more along the lines of a zombie, but I'm still disappointed that you don't like vampire movies. Anyway, Howling 6, not a great movie. Are you looking to travel beyond the void? This is Alex from Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. Join me and my co-host Brittany Bloodshed every week for two episodes on Monday and Thursday. Do you like to drink, laugh, and talk horror? Well, so do we. We make up funny skits, horror shots each week, news, and rotating segments on Monday like great plots where we make up movies on the spot interviews reviews and a lot more plus on thursdays we break down two horror movies with jokes and loads of trivia go to longlivethevoid.com to check out beyond the void horror podcast now what did you guys watch this week all right so after such a depressing watch or disappointing watch with howling six i wanted to bring it back up with uh i watched bright on netflix and i heard a lot of negativity about it. And so I had really low expectations and they were blown out of the water. That movie was super entertaining. So I took it strictly as a, um, as a 
let's watch the movie and take the movie for what the movie it is not like let's think about the politics of the people that were involved with it so uh, let me preface why i'm going all the effusiveness that's going to come later by saying i understand max lannis isn't a good dude and i also understand that netflix screwed over a bunch of the uh, a large section of the effects team by not putting their names in the credits but hopefully they can rectify that part at least that that's like a that's a two hour job to fix and immediately have that streaming correctly on Netflix. I don't know if they did or not, but it is such a good movie. I am not a Will Smith fan, but I fucking love two things. One, I love fantasy movies like swords and sorcery shit. And I love movies that happen in one night. And I have not seen a good 24 hour movie in a long, long time. And this movie just knocked it out of the park. Um, the uh, the effects team did such an amazing job on the orcs because they have a guy that gets 50% of the screen time with someone who doesn't have any facial prostheses and he's able to emote and you feel bad for him. Like the, the writing is really good. I know Max Landis is a douche, but the the it was written so well and Will Smith doesn't do his like welcome to earth kind of like he's not he's not just like he was in Independence Day. And it's just such a stark contrast because you kind of think that Will Smith is pigeonholed because he kind of is always Will Smith. But in in Bright, he has some nuance to his character. And then you th- the last thing I saw him in was Suicide Squad, which is an, a, just a total abortion of a film. And you just realize as you're watching Bright, like, okay, Will Smith can act if you give him a good director or if he's given to a good director and bright is just so good. It looks beautiful. It's written really well. The pacing's amazing. It's a long movie. It's like an hour and 45 minutes. It's a long movie. And I didn't feel like it dragged at all. And the, the world building was so subtle and great. Uh, I have absolutely, there's actually only, I think there was only one line that felt a little cheesy. The rest felt super real and I think they're going to make a trilogy out of it. Uh, I think that they greenlit both of the the sequels already because it did so well. But yeah, if, if you haven't watched it, I mean, I, we're recording this a little before, uh, a couple weeks before it's getting released. But if you if you haven't watched it by the time this drops, do yourself a favor, watch it. It is such an entertaining All film. All right, uh, to jump off of you talking about fantasy stuff, I'd like to talk about something fantasy that I saw. Uh, the movie that everybody's talking about, Star Wars The Last Jedi. Oh yeah, let's let's. Uh, so dig into we'll that. keep it uh, still super spoiler free because I just saw it the other day. So what's to say that a bunch of other people still haven't seen it? Um, I found this movie so good, and I I know that uh, there's a lot of split feelings on the movie out there. Um, I really enjoyed it. I would put it like top four movies. Um, for me, I I think that a lot of the people's complaints I understand. But I think that it's absolutely necessary. Uh, there's a really, really, really good like hour and a half long episode of Geekscape um, that's just Jonathan and this guy Ian breaking down the movie scene by scene and talking about like what things imply. Uh, and his co-host actually said something that I really liked, which he was like, "This is," he goes, "This is." A lot of people complain that it that the first movie was like a very pro woman movie and this one isn't. And he's like, I super disagree. Like every decision that a guy makes in this movie is the wrong decision. It's only the women who are making the right decisions throughout the entire movie. He's like, to me, I think that's like a huge thing. Um, and I really connect it with Luke. I, I think that, uh, I posted an article on my personal uh, Facebook page last night. That's a very interesting look at how Luke Skywalker's journey very accurately represents struggling with depression and anxiety where you make a single mistake and most of the world sees that as one minor mistake but to you you feel like you need to cut yourself off from the world and the world needs to accept that you're not as great as they think you are and i can relate to that so strongly um i just think it's a brilliant movie i think i think it's very well done i like it more than the force awakens and on par with uh rogue one I just think it's a. I think it's such a good film. I want to see it again. Which there's not a lot of movies that I'd actually spend money to see in the theaters, and I already used my movie pass once, so I can't see it twice on movie pass. So I might actually put down money to see it a second time. 
Wait, so so Ralph, have you seen it? I have not yet. Um, I, it actually took me a while to see Force Awakens, and it took me even longer to see Rogue One. I uh, haven't seen Last Jedi yet, but I, I do plan on definitely getting around to it. It's worth it, dude. It's. I think that it's definitely a at least watch once kind of thing. Like I have some serious reservations with the decisions that were made in it, and I I would argue that yes, the women are all making the right decisions and the men are making the wrong decisions, but Megan had a really good argument, and she said that after how strong Ray was in the Force Awakens as a person like her 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 personal fortitude a lot of this movie they made her cry and she felt like that took away the strength of her character not her power because she really only gets more powerful but um she her her character seems to get the more powerful she gets the more she cries um i understand that it's kind of like a I don't know, like that the, they're trying to juxtapose those two things, like her 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 force power with her emotional fortitude. But I don't know, man. Um, I enjoyed watching it, but it felt more popcorn to me. It felt like it had a lot of throwaway scenes that I could have done without. The Force Awakens did not feel that way for neither myself nor Megan. So. Um, I'm glad that you loved it, Matt. I, I think that it's worth watching, um, and I don't think that it deserves all the credit and dis- or all the criticism and all the back and forth and the stupid bullshit memes that are going back and forth. People take Star Wars way too fucking seriously. Like yeah. it's a movie, you know. It's not like it's not politics. It's not going to inf- like affect your life if people have differing opinions about things than you. So I don't understand why it's so hotly disputed. Like just. It's a fucking movie. I am a big fan of the meme of uh, Luke milking Rilo Ken, though. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's great. Uh, so, Ralph, what did you watch this week? Uh, first one's going to be quick. I watched Blood Rage. I know you guys uh, reviewed it a couple months back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was a year. Yeah, it was. Oof. That was that was two thousand. That was Thanksgiving two thousand fifteen, man. Yeah. It was that far back? Oh, no, no, two thousand sixteen. Sorry. It was Are you sure. No, we watched it. Absolutely. We watched Blood it Rage. in December because I yelled at you for oh. for not. You had watched it previously, and we couldn't think yeah. of a Thanksgiving movie, so we didn't watch one. And then, like, no, I had never seen it. And then, like, well, you had watched had it before I? us, though. Like, it was on the list, and you were so far ahead of everything that you were like, "Oh, okay." I was like, oh, "I can't think of any good Thanksgiving movies." And you're like, "Ah, oh, don't worry about it." And then, like, two weeks after Thanksgiving, we're reviewing Blood Rage. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Just, like, we're reviewing this right before a bunch of Christmas movies. <laughs> like, I thought Blood Rage was pretty awesome. I, I don't it. know if I'm the minority. Yeah, no, it's it's dumb fun. It's just a series of people getting murdered. Like, it's great. <laughs> um, and ones that I guess we could extrapolate a little bit more. I watched Mother. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if either of you guys have seen I that. I saw it, and I, I still don't know if I like it or not. I definitely know I'm probably not going to watch it again. Um, I think it was so heavy handed with its message. I mean, yeah, it was I just had so it... funny because didn't it wasn't the whole thing that people were saying like, oh, its message is so deep. And I read a synopsis. I'm like, it seems pretty straightforward yeah. to me. <laughs> I had it spoiled for me before I watched it. And I think it made it better because I knew what to kind of expect out of it. Um, you know, it's it's. It's just kind of, as you said, it's not that all, it's not all that great. I would probably never watch it again. Um, the end is pretty nuts, but I mean, it, I, it's, I wouldn't write home about yeah, it. Well, you know, it's, it's just, and that's the thing, like, this isn't spoiling most of the movie because I think there's enough people who've said it already, but like the movies, the mother is supposed to be like mother earth and like the lines of dialogue that are just driving that shit home, which is just like. I let people into my house and they just ruin it. And I'm like, oh my God, shoot me in the fucking face. This is so (laughs) heavy handed. And it's like subtlety, quote unquote. Yeah, you know, and and his previous movies have been a lot more subtle, you know, and then this one really just, it's in your, it's so in your face. So it's, it's, it's a pretty big change. So I certainly understand why some people hated it. And especially from, I'm not even going to attempt to say his his last name. Darren you know, Aronofsky. There you go. 
So I, I understand why people hate it. It's not it's not terrible, but it's it's nothing amazing. Uh, the other movie I watched, which I really enjoyed, was Creep Two. I heard that that's a lot better than Creep One, which I was not that big of a fan of. I'm a big fan of Creep One, and I think Creep Two did a very good job of progressing uh, the character played by Mark Duplass. Can't even say his character's name because you don't know what his name is because uh, you don't know when he's lying or not. And that's, you know, one of the things I feel like his acting in the movie is just like it's going to sound stupid, but I think his acting is tremendous. He does such a good job of not being able to tell if he's lying or not. And this happens now in two movies, you know, and I'm, I'm excited to see if they continue the franchise and, you know, put, put him into a third one. But, you know, instead of rehashing the first movie, they really progress the character kind of as much as he can. And they add a female character into it. So, you know, it also, it also dwells into, all right, is he going to give up his horrendous past, you know, for a piece of ass, or is he still just going to continue being, you know, this terrible, uh, creep. Um, but I, I think the movie, much like the first one without really doing much, it has enough twists and turns just kind of based upon how strong, uh, the characters are, you know, it's it's the same same idea as the first one where it's just two people for, I would say, 90 percent of the film. And they both are very strong as far as how, how they come across. All right. Uh, anything else there, Ralph? Or are we going to wrap this motherfucker up? Uh, wrap it up. Uh, I'm, I'm about to be part of the outfit. Right. <laughs> that was the howling to the freaks from 1991 as picked by you guys you guys can always send us suggestions at hmnpodcast at gmail.com uh and you can make us suffer i think the next month of picks is going to be in may but stay tuned because there is one more movie so stay tuned for what's going to happen next week uh, we might unlock something that unleashes a whole bunch of hell spawn. Who knows? Anything's possible. Ralph, would you like to join us next week to discover what the final uh, listener submitted movie is? Only if Scott wears that sweet killer dwarf's jacket. <laughs> I think that's. I think got we've it, got it. All right. Tune in next week to find out. listening to the Geekscape Network.